in the Old Testament, uh, we find this passage and a descriptive passage of where they were at, where that church, and it was a church in the, in the wilderness or moving in the promised land. It was God's people. It was a church. They had a priesthood set up. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord before Eli. And work from the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were infrequent. I'm not sure in all of the Old Testament or New there's more there's a more tragic explanation of the condition of God's people. The word of the Lord was rare. Tragic commentary on the conditions of those times. And what else, what that commentary was addressing was a dead religious system. Later on in the story, they actually lose the ark. I mean, the one precious thing they had to hold and to guard and to, to love, the one thing they had was the ark, the very presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. And they lost it. So the word was prayer and they lost his presence. Lord help us. Lord help us that that never be a commentary for us corporately or for you individually. If I can see you the, the word of the Lord is a bit rarer in our life. We don't want to be there. Lord help us. That frame of word, what God is saying now, that frame of life word, what God is speaking to the moment. And then also we have the Logos word, which is more past tense, what God has said, we find in the Logos. But what he is saying now is in the Rhema. I fear for some of these Seeker sensitive churches. I don't know. I don't know the internal condition of them. I just what I do understand is is that their 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 drive, their focus is on visitors, is on seekers. They're they're, they're looking to uh, tone down some things in order not to offend anyone. Uh, I, for one, and I believe I'm with people that would agree, and I, I don't want to offend the Lord. I want to be God-sensitive. I want to be God-sensitive, because uh, with what are we doing here, saints, if we don't often experience the presence of the Lord and the Word of the Lord? Now, I, I hope today to speak the word of the Lord. I don't believe everything I say, by the way, is the word of the Lord. I don't intentionally go contrary, but I'm a man. And some of my words are man's words. But I know when I speak for him. I know when I have released his word, okay? And I can't go along. I mean, I don't tell my wife. I go home some Sundays in agony. Feeling that I missed the mark. Uh, but I thank God for times when I feel I hit the mark. Okay? And I feel because of some reaction with you. We're here, we're, I'm not 
just a speaker and you're just a listener and this is not an academic exercise. Because of some reaction or some comment or some sense that I get, uh, I believe we're dealing with the word of the Lord. That's a great thing. Or someone will come up here with this mic. If you're new around here, you don't understand what that mic for. It's not for announcements only. It's for people who want to come up and share what God is speaking to them. What God did last week in, in their midst. What divine appointment that the Holy Spirit made for them. It's, it's the current word of what God is doing in our lives. Or <clears throat> the gifts of the Spirit. First uh, Corinthians 14 says, earnestly desire the gifts. And that's a strong thought there. It's coming. Coming the gifts. But what? Especially that you might prophesy. Because prophecy edifies people. I look forward to a, a Sunday morning. It does great things for my heart when I'm going to preach on this or that line and someone comes up here and grabs that mic and starts prophesying uh, along that line. It, it does something for my faith and you, you'll never know. Uh, or the same thing when Joe, the worship leader, he, I never tell him what I'm going to preach. I never give him a clue. And yet he'll come up with songs and come up with this song or that song and it, it's just like we had coordinated the effort. And then I say, thank you Lord. Man, looks like we've tapped into something. Looks like we've tapped in to this thing we call the Word of the Lord. And let it not be said in our lives corporately or in your lives privately that the Word of the Lord was rare. In those days, one one pastor, many of you know, of a secret sensitive idea moved. One day I was listening to him and he was speaking to the people. And he said, If any of you have made Jesus Christ your life leader, I said, Life leader. I I guess the concept is in scripture, but I've never heard those words. And later, when I, uh, the thought came up, why a life later? Well, we don't want to be, we don't want to use Christianese in the church because people come in and they, they can't relate to all of our Christian language. So instead of Lord, of all the words they could have picked in the Bible, he said to me, instead of Lord, we like to say life leader. And I just kind of thought to myself, uh, have you forgotten the scripture that says, if you confess with your mouth, Jesus as Lord. If you confess with your mouth, Jesus as Lord. And believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Seems to me God put some importance on the Lord. Amen? Amen. I don't want to I don't want to edit that out of my Bible. But do it once and then edit it, by the way. You understand? Whatever King James or good Bible that you have, hold on to it tight because they're going to become where the day is going to come in our children's lives. Where it's going to be difficult to get what we consider an uh, orthodox Bible. They are editing and taking the female and the male and then taking this stuff out. Well, I would never have believed that except if some are going to take the Lord out of the Bible and make it somewhere a little neutral. Like it's either your life leader and that. No, Jesus is Lord. Another scripture you're familiar with. <laughs> no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Doesn't that, wouldn't that place a real, real, real importance on Jesus is Lord? <laughs> oh my. Will be God says. The Lord has made great provision for us 
regarding the word of the Lord. He wants us to hear. Jesus said, my sheep hear. God has given us and made for us provision. It's written, Matthew 4, 4, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Lord, we just declare here today, we love your word, we want your word, we need your word more than more than food itself, Lord God. We need and desire the word of the Lord. <laughs> Provisions for the word. Wait a second, I, we can hear him. <clears throat> There's three of them that I look at. Or, or, or let me put it this way. What has God done or what has he given you in your life? What do you have to hear the word of the Lord? Anybody? The Bible. What do you say? The Bible. The Bible. Yeah. Yeah. Is there another? Is there something else comes to mind? The Holy Spirit. And I would say that perhaps is the most personal. When the Holy Spirit communes with my spirit. What a wonderful word. What an intimate and wonderful thing that is. So he's given us the Bible and he's given us that, that personal interaction. And you know what else he's given us? He's given us one another. Christian uh, I can't tell you how often I after church, before church, whatever, or, or I always say it, someone comes up to this point and they share what I would, they'll say this, I think God is saying this. And boom, they release the word of the Lord of the edification of the whole house. What a beautiful thing. He's given us the Bible and his spirit and his body. Friends and family, or others, however, you might hear it on a devotional tape or, 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 or uh, there's lots of ways to hear God. Fourteen years ago, I started talking to my family in the early part of the year and started saying, you know what, I think I might start a church. And I got a response from that. And then I just held that. I said, Lord, if that's your will, if it's your will that I do that, speak to me. And I've often said, the Lord delivered the word of the Lord to me seven different ways. And, and these ways that I'm talking about also were, were all regarding friends, family, people. I, my phone rang one day and I picked up the phone and the lady said, Tom, I said, I recognize your voice. She had come to the church five, ten years before. She said, Tom, I was just worshiping God today and thinking about you. And I know you haven't been pastoring for a few years. Um, she said, I don't know. You do what you want, but if you're done, it rests upon me. You're supposed to get uh, back in the ministry. Thank you, sister. I will hold that before the Lord. And I did, and I was. And then my sister called me a week later. She said, Tom, you know, I, I, I know you're, you're doing this thing. I was in school construction. I know you're in construction, but boy, oh boy, I was praying this morning. The Lord, I thought the Lord said to me, time to get back in the Sabbath. Okay? And uh, it wasn't like her to say things like that. So I, I really appreciate it. I said, Marsha, thank you. I said, Marsha, you know, you don't know, but you have spoken what I believe is the word of God. And that's a precious thing, okay? I mean, I, I don't take it lightly. 
word of the Lord is, is a wonderful thing. Having someone prophesy or lay hands on you or just come and say, I was, I was, I was seeking the Lord the other day and you came on my heart. I think God speak this, said this. Those are wonderful things. But they are impersonal. Our spirit is where we hear God and touch Jesus in fellowship with the Lord on a very personal level. When you hear the word of the Lord for yourself, it's a very encouraging thing. How many of you, when you knew you heard God, you thought that was really good? Or when you thought you heard God and you brought it up to someone else and they said, you know, it's exactly, that's exactly what I've been thinking about when you said, Ah, well, we were kind of happy about that. We were kind of grateful. It encourages us. It, it personalizes our walk. There's no middleman involved. A couple of weeks ago, Ben told us about Madeline. Ben and Molly and Ben, about, he talked about Madeline, uh, his daughter. And he said she was sitting in church and and for her head, she said, Dad, I heard God for me. What a tremendous confession. What a tremendous thing. Madeline, I'm, I'm proud of you. I'm grateful. I, I heard God today. It's like Samuel coming to Eli and said, I was sitting around, I heard this, and he finished me. I said, Go back and pay attention. It's God. God speaking to you. Uh, Personalize our walk. See, I believe this. I believe a personal relationship that we make much of in the evangelical churches. A personal relationship is only a theory without real living back and forth communication with the Lord. And hearing His voice, hearing His word, faith cometh by hearing. It releases. When I know my word, God, it releases faith. Uh, in my life. I was disappointed. I mean, summer Sunday mornings are a hard thing for me. You all know that people are here, not here, that you hope will be here. As I was thinking about this sermon, and I think about Madeline hearing the word of the Lord, you know, Samuel hearing the word of the Lord, I thought about this little guy that sits right here, Isaiah. Isaiah Templin. And he hears God. He's got a good ear and a good heart. And you mark my words, church, over the years, you're going to hear him at the mic or the pulpit delivering the word of the Lord and prophesying the word of God. I, I, I believe that. And anytime he even stands up here and he just kind of says a few words and he says a few bashful things, I, I believe he's speaking God's heart. What a wonderful thing, eh? Young people in the church. And I hope all of you young people develop an ear to hear the, the word of God. John 10, 27, my sheep hear my voice. That's not an option. That's not an option. If you're here and you're born again and you're one of your sheep, you hear his voice. And I know that they follow me and I give eternal life to them. Uh, doesn't this come for you? They shall never perish. No one shall snatch them out of my hand. And I, I, I thank you, Lord, for such great security. They will never, never perish. That's Jesus' word. But if you're one of the sheep, and I would guess you are here, almost all of you, then you hear his voice, and I would encourage you, never confess that you don't. Because I think if you do, you're just believing and repeating a lie. I've had many wonderful children of God over the years come to me and say, Pastor, I don't hear God. Don't say that. I don't hear God. Yes, you do. You may not recognize it. You may not always recognize it as the Lord, but my sheep hear my voice. Say amen. amen. Why do you think, why do you think pastors ask people 
say to them, I want that response. I mean, when you ask for it, it's not much good. I'll tell you, it doesn't, it, it doesn't do what it could have done. But it's the very thing. That I'm speaking something, again, not every word, but some of, some of this is the word of the Lord. And I'm speaking from my spirit, and I want to touch your spirit. It's the spirit that gives life. See, if, if it's just my mind to your mind, there's no life being exchanged. There's only information being exchanged. We could go to a lyceum and have a lecture. And then I got to get up and give us a wonderful lecture, and there are just wonderful things he's saying, but it's information, his head coming to my head. But when I speak, when someone comes up and says, Oh, Pastor, what you said today, what you said today, you know, just really touched my heart. Exactly what they're saying is, Pastor, your spirit touched my spirit today. And there was an exchange of life. And that's a, a wonderful and a miraculous thing. And it happens. <clears throat> oh, Pastor, I listened to a, I listened to a, a CD the other day, and it was very anointed, it really blessed me. What you're saying is, my spirit was touched by the spirit of that speaker. Right? You get that? Spirit to spirit. Uh, I believe the Lord speaks to us very often. And why do I think that? Because Jesus is our spiritual example, our bigger brother, our example. And he said, I only say what I hear. But then, in practice, he was talking a lot. He, he, he did a lot of talking on some occasions. He did a lot. Of, so I said to myself, he must have, and his hearing a lot. He's connected to the Father. In Isaiah chapter 2, it says, Jesus delighted in the fear of the Lord. Okay? And, and basically, he walked in the spirit of the fear of the Lord. I've taught often, and I'll teach quite a few. I mean, I'm a, it's a continuum I bring around the subject of the fear of the Lord. And that one of the great aspects of the fear of the Lord is I am God conscious. I am walking on earth, but I have one ear open, open to heaven to hear the Father. I'm God aware, God conscious. That's the fear of the Lord. That's a wonderful thing. I mean, if, if how, how many of you can walk oblivious of the Lord? It's a hard thing to do. Is there, is there ever a time in your day where you don't think Father's looking down on this? He's watching what I do. This, what I'm doing or saying or, or not saying, perhaps is not pleasing to him. I'm aware that he's involved in my life. And that's what I'm calling God consciousness. But what, I, but what is absolutely an element of the fear of the Lord. Acknowledging God at all times. What a tremendous walk. Tremendous walk. I'll tell you what, I try, I try to do that. I try to have him here to heaven. And, and all of a sudden, our friends come call me up and say something to me. Boy, that's God. Man, that's good. That's the Lord. And, and I'll thank her. And she didn't call with that in mind. But a sensitive, a sensitive ear is what we've been given. My sheep hear my voice. Hearing the Lord's words is exciting and wonderful and vital. That's why we envy wars against it. And Jesus said in, in Mark 4.16, 
4.24. Take care of what you listen to. Because God is speaking, sometimes we're not hearing if there's enough distraction, if there's enough background noise. It's, it's, hard to, it's hard to hear. There are hindrances, many voices. There are many voices in the land. I want to encourage you. I, I think one real distraction in our walk with God is the busy lives that we live. Sometimes our lives get so busy and it's, it's hard to, to, to sit down and take time even to hear God. We get so busy. I, I, many years ago, I was questioning the Lord on hearing, and I don't know what was all going on, but He spoke a word to me, and it was very soft and very, said, simplify. Simplify. And I have endeavored after that to declutter my life a little bit, simplify, because there's so many distractions. I'll tell you about it. And this I speak to mostly the millennials, but perhaps some older ones. Watch out for that internet. Watch out for that internet. I was on a, a Zoom call with uh, half a dozen pastors, and we were talking about hearing God and not hearing God and, and people in the church. And you know what? There was kind of an agreement that these days are possibly the hardest days pastor and shepherd people than there's ever been. Because there's so many voices. Okay? There's so many voices out there. And people are listening to all kinds of stuff. I, people tell, oh, that pastor, I heard this on, I heard this on the internet. And I heard that. Now some of it is meant to be heard and it's God and it's good for you. But there's a whole lot of stuff going on. There's a whole lot of things going on that uh, I, for one, as a pastor, I don't, I don't want to compete with that. You know, if you take words as words from the Lord, make sure, make sure you know something about the person who's speaking that word. Scripture says, know them that labor among you. Okay. I mean, I just will not receive the word of the Lord from someone if I don't know who he's sleeping with. If I don't know what, what manner of life he's living. If I, I mean, we don't have to know someone personally to realize that they have a long-standing testimony in the body of Christ. And, and of course, that's, that's sufficient. That's the food of their life. But there's a lot of those newcomers on that on that internet there. Uh, and they're going back and forth to heaven and they're going to portals and they're going to heaven and, and sitting on God's lap. And, 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 uh, these are some very questionable things. Uh, right? If you don't know your Bible, you don't know the doctrine of Jesus Christ, you don't know the doctrine of the Trinity, be careful when someone tells you, you know, I was sitting on God's lap. I don't know why I'm even talking about this. There is only one visible aspect of God, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? He is the visible that reflects the invisible. But I haven't some guy on that internet there just from what I hear. I, I don't pay too much attention to it. But what I hear is they're just shooting back and forth together like uh, in my elevator. I'm not buying it. So be careful with distractions. Let's stand. I just want to pray a simple prayer. And I have to just receive this. By faith, receive this. If we had a bunch of deaf ears here, we would pray for physical healing for those ears and believe God. But I want to pray for a spiritual unstopping. If, if anyone is a little bit hard hearing when it comes to the word of the Lord, I just want to pray for that. Father, Lord, I suppose.
of it myself. And I pray for my brothers and my sisters. And I pray, Lord, if there is any, uh, any doctrine, any confusion, any hurt or difficulty that prevents people from clearly hearing your voice, your word, I pray that be gone and done with in Jesus' name. I pray for spiritual healing of spiritual ears. Father, we love you. We love your word. We want to hear your word. We want to hear it clearly. That we might live our life in a manner that's pleasing to you. And we might be a blessing to others. Lord, as you give us the word, give us faith to deliver that word. Hallelujah. Open our ears, Father. Open our ears that we might hear more clearly than ever before. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thank you for that. I believe you for that. In Jesus' name.